Season 4 gets off to a strong start with the introduction to a slithery and contemptible new villain. Contempt of Court was directed by Jan Eliasberg and was written by Peter McCabe. This is McCabe's first Miami Vice credit, though he'll go on to have many more, and he will become the series' executive story editor in season five. It's season four, and once again, the hairstyles have changed. Tubbs now has a beard, and Crockett is sporting a glorious mullet. While I think it's a shame to cover up so much of Philip Michael Thomas's pretty face, I will always be partial to a good mullet, so I fully endorse Don Johnson's new look. The episode opens with Crockett arresting the notorious and very smug mobster Frank Mosca on multiple charges, including murder. Mosca is played by Stanley Tucci, who already popped up on Miami Vice last season in a small role on the episode Baby Blues, but Mosca really gives him a chance to shine. Mosca is a very memorable Vice villain, so much so that when Tucci started making a name for himself playing nice guys in films like The Devil Wears Prada, I was having none of it. He is a versatile and talented actor, but he's always going to be Frank Mosca to me. At Mosca's arraignment, Judge Delaporte, who is played by Philip Baker Hall of Magnolia and Boogie Nights, orders Mosca released on bail. This is much to the dismay of the district attorney, Alice Carson, who is played by Meg Foster, a cult favorite actress for her roles in films like John Carpenter's They Live, as well as for her performance as Evil Lynn in He-Man Masters of the Universe. Mosca has a long-standing habit of tampering with witnesses and juries, so Vice goes into overdrive protecting everyone involved with the case, particularly Crockett's informant, who gave Vice the necessary information to make their case. Mosca, out on bail, meets with his attorney, Sid Schenker, who is played by Mark Bloom, who played Rosanna Arquette's utterly worthless husband in Desperately Seeking Susan. Mosca swears to smoke out and eliminate Crockett's informant. To cover all his bases, he runs around murdering perfectly innocent henchman. Crockett meets with his informant, Jack Rivers, played by Stephen Keats, who is a lone enforcer for Mosca. Crockett wants him to go into witness protection, but Rivers insists on remaining anonymous because he doesn't want to disrupt the life of his teen son, Terry, played by Richard Panabianco. Alice Carson successfully persuades Judge Delaporte to revoke Mosca's bail, so Mosca settles into a very cushy cell with plenty of nice amenities, including Chianti and silk sheets and an espresso machine and Amaretti cookies and a ton of San Pellegrino because being in jail is thirsty work. The trial begins with full security in place to protect the jurors. Despite all this security, a slew of witnesses retract their testimony out of fear and Mosca's goons track down jurors. Chaos reigns. At some point, the courtroom gets glitter bombed. In jail, Mosca is tipped off by a former police officer that Rivers is the leak. Crockett is called to the witness stand. Schenker tries to force him to identify his informant. Crockett refuses and he's jailed for contempt. Rivers' son Terry calls Tubbs in a panic because Rivers has been arrested on trumped up charges. While Call It Love by Yellow plays, Rivers is processed at the jail. Tubbs and Alice Carson hurry to the judge's home with a court order to get Rivers released, but Rivers is stabbed to death in the jail corridor while Crockett watches helplessly from a nearby cell. Crockett, now out of jail, meets with Terry to console him on his father's murder. Terry lays a significant guilt trip on him, then gives him his father's secret files on Mosca. This should be more than enough to put Mosca away, but one of Mosca's goons plants money on one of the jurors to suggest he's been taking bribes, and the judge is forced to throw the case out. Outside the courthouse, as Mosca gives a press conference, he's ambushed by a gun waving Terry. It's essentially a repeat of the ending of the season one episode, No Exit, in which the abused wife of Bruce Willis's character, Tony Amato, shoots and kills him outside the courthouse after he manages to avoid prosecution. This time around, Crockett manages to talk Terry out of killing Mosca, and Mosca walks away unscathed. We will see Mosca again later this season. Most of this episode is familiar ground for Miami Vice. We have seen mobsters before. We've seen Crockett thrown in jail for contempt of court before. We have seen witnesses intimidated or murdered by criminals before, but it's all done really well and the story still manages to seem pretty fresh. Mosca is a great villain for the way he's completely unperturbed by any obstacles in his path. A slam dunk homicide case against him doesn't even make him break a sweat because he knows he has the resources to make it all go away. This is a rock solid episode that makes it seem like season four is in very good hands. We won't be able to say the same thing for all of season four, but this is a really good start, so I'm giving it four flamingos. Next time, Brian Dennehy plays a money-loving televangelist who might be hiding some secrets. Thank you for joining me for a brand new season, and I will meet you back here later. Goodbye.